Uniswap V2 revolutionized DeFi in 2020. At any given time, the pool has a certain amount of X assets and Y assets in it. This is a dot on the swap invariant curve. XY equals K. The price of X in terms of Y is the slope of the tangent line to the curve. Traders swap with the pool to move from one asset to another. The price the trader pays is negative delta Y divided by delta X. The price the trader pays is always different than the current pool price because the slope of negative delta Y divided by delta X is different than the slope at the tangent point. This price difference is called slippage. Arbitragers will trade to bring the prices in line with external markets. The LPs are losing out in these arbitrage transactions as they are implicitly agreeing to swap at above market prices. Slippage not only annoys traders by forcing them to pay above market prices, slippage also creates an arbitrage opportunity which implicitly hurts LPs. Uniswap V3 hoped to solve these problems. Uniswap V3 addressed this slippage problem by allowing LPs to concentrate liquidity in certain price ranges. The LPs will try to concentrate their liquidity around the current swap price in order to maximize the fees they collect. If an LP's liquidity is allocated anywhere other than the current price tick, that LP does not collect any fee for that liquidity. The liquidity distribution curve can be used to compute the swap invariant curve. Roughly speaking, the area under the liquidity curve to the left and right of the price represents the amount of Y and X in the pool. The swap curve is derived by tracing out the price from low to high on the liquidity curve. In V2, the liquidity curve is implicitly flat, leading to the XY equals K swap invariant. This is why people think of V2 as not having concentrated liquidity because the liquidity distro is uniform across all prices. The liquidity distributions that are concentrated lead to constant slope portions of the swap invariant which leads to lower slippage swap prices around the liquidity concentration. By overlaying the x, y equals k curve, it is more obvious that the swap invariant has a flatter section around the liquidity concentration. This is good for traders, but much more work for LPs as they need to constantly reallocate their liquidity to stay in line with the market price. If they don't, their capital will be stagnant and they will not collect any fees. Another implication of LPs not moving is that the liquidity will be thin at the current market price, leading to even more slippage than Uniswap V2. This is a lose-lose situation. Vaults and other automated mechanisms exist to auto-rebalance liquidity, but these are expensive and point to a fundamental design flaw in Uniswap V3. LPs should not have to actively manage their liquidity manually or with a bot. The Mav Gaussian ALP solves this problem. MAV reimagines liquidity concentration by building and rebalancing from the beginning. MAV does this with two mechanisms. One, an on-chain oracle. Two, a liquidity distribution curve that continuously shifts with the oracle price. This means that the swap curve will always have a broad base of support around the current oracle price, leading to low slippage trades and less IL for LPs. MAV also supports auto-sizing the width of the liquidity distribution to handle more or less volatile assets. We can derive the MAV Gaussian swap invariant curve from the liquidity curve. The net result is that MAV's ALP AMM supports larger trades for a given slippage level. With these built-in liquidity adjusting dynamics, both traders and LPs have better performance in terms of slippage and net profits in MAV. Who is worse off? Arbitrageurs are. With less slippage, there's less room for ARBs to operate.